All right, this is it, guys. The final game between Redeemer and Advocate. You're listening to Vol, and we're watching the TSL. This is game three of a best of three match between these two players, with Redeemer spawning at the right hand side position on the map Zodiac, and A2 slash Advocate, we'll call him Advocate, at the six o'clock position as the White Terran. In fact, this is the third time that he spawned as the White Terran in the uh, in the three game series, so uh, a little bit of luck there if you like White. Uh, yeah, really, really excited about this match. Uh, both players are playing great uh, so far uh, in the last two games. The first game taken out by Advocate, the second game by Redeemer on Blue Storm with a wave of Ultralis and uh, Lings. And uh, it's the final decider, guys, so really excited to see who uh, will advance to the round of 32 um, after winning this game. So, yeah, let's see who can take it out. The map is Zodiac, as I mentioned. We've got, uh, once again, I'll just say it again, Re Redeemer, 3 o'clock position, Advocate, 6 o'clock position, and uh, Terran versus Zerg. So, one of my favorite matchups. I'm really looking forward to seeing some great play from these guys. Uh, supply Depot going down. Nothing uh, interesting happening yet from the Zerg player. So, just to talk a little bit more about the TSL and the uh, competition. By the way, uh, if I didn't say so before, Advocate is a Russian player. Sometimes uh, goes by the name A2, so if you've seen him as A2, that's who he is. Redeemer is also known as TOT in control. In fact, he's uh, more commonly known as in control, but he's using the nick in uh, Redeemer for this particular game in this tournament. Uh, Redeemer putting down his second hatchery now, so uh, standard stuff. He hasn't got nine pool so far. In fact, nine pool is a bit of a risky, risky strategy against uh, Terran on most maps anyway. So there you have it. Uh, the TSL. Right, we're actually on um, playoff stage, uh, day two of the, the TSL. We're just working out the group of people who are going into the round of 32 stage. Really looking forward to that. Hopefully we'll be doing some commentaries for that. Uh, just to mention to people, again, uh, those of you who don't know, there is actually a audio commentary competition going on on the Team Liquid website. Uh, that's been going uh, yesterday and today. Yesterday I posted a game between, uh, who was it? It was, uh, I did z -Pucks against Castro, but that was my actual competition entry. I also did a Fusion SPX against, uh, who was it? I forget who it was. Uh, maybe I'll remember in a second, but uh, today I'm doing Advocate against Redeemer. And uh, there'll be a voting stage tomorrow, I believe. Uh, and so just show up on the Team Liquid website and make sure you vote for your favorite commentator because uh, I want to see a good amount of support for this competition. I think it's a really good idea. Whew. Uh, sorry if I'm talking too fast, guys. I haven't had any negative feedback about that, but uh, I really just like to keep up with the game as quickly as I can, just to mention everything that's going on, if possible. I've got an SCV in Redeemer's base at the moment, and uh, at the beginning stage of the game, he sent his Overlord out the wrong way, so he won't uh, have a, a too good I an idea of what Advocate's doing, although Advocate ex fast expanded after one barracks for the last two games, so maybe he'll be expecting more of the same third hatchery going down for Redeemer. Uh, Advocate putting down his second barracks now that he's got that first command center up and running. Got the barrack, uh, the bunker there just in case a lot of uh, Zoglings show up. Only two Zoglings though. Uh, Redeemer knows that he won't be able to, you know, take take out that expansion with just six Zoglings. It's not really possible uh, thanks to that bunker and uh, good micromanagement, which is inevitable at the hands of such a good player, which is uh, Advocate. If you've seen him before, you know this guy is uh, pretty good. Uh, one of the, the better Russian players. Uh, first name Dimitri. Forget how how his last name is pronounced. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if this game um, turns into a, a bit of a slugfest because the last two games were are uh, were about fifteen minutes long each, and uh, they were decent games, but uh, there were only sort of two or three interesting plays per game. And I'm hoping this game does turn out to be an epic battle for the finish because. This is uh, the best of three, game three, and this is winner takes all right here, so uh, really excited to see what happens. We've got a Lear being upgraded at the natural expansion, and I think that's really interesting because Redeemer perhaps wants to hide something, maybe wants to, to hide the fact that he's going for Lear, wants to throw his opponent off because he expects his opponent to use the scan sweep on his main base, and uh, Evolution Chamber going down, uh, and Hydralis then. So this is interesting, he's not going for Mutalisks, so maybe... Uh, that's because he's stronger with Hydralis, I don't know, maybe he thinks that Advocate will expect Mutalis because it's more common in this matchup. Uh, I'm not sure, but he's gone for Hydralis and it did win him the game last time. I'm not sure if it was this Hydralis in particular that won him the game last time. In fact, 
having said that, last game was on Blue Storm. He did go Hydralis and Mutilus. Uh, sorry, uh, blah, blah, Lurkers first. Sorry about that little tongue-tied stumble. He went Lurkers first, but I think it was his Ultralis that won him the game in that previous game, and it was uh, Advocate's lack of decisive uh, manoeuvres with his main army that also lost him the game previous time. So we'll see how this works out. Maybe Advocate will be a bit more decisive this time that uh, SCV is being ushered away by that uh, sunken colony. Love saying the word ushered. Ushered. All right, uh, Lurker's being researched. Lurker, Lurker Tech. Three barracks, again from Advocate. I think three bar barracks isn't a bad response to Lurker's because you've got a fast expansion. You may as well use it to get as many Marines as you can. But uh, i like to see a quick factory against uh, Lurkers and then maybe a second factory later on. Uh, it's, it's, I mean, I'm only, what, a, a D-plus, C-minus level player. <laughs> but uh, I, I have found that uh, going for a, a factory as, as fast as possible versus Lurkers are, are a decent idea. I have seen uh, good players do that. Uh, but it, it may just be the case that Advocate isn't quite, it wasn't quite aware in time that uh, Lurkers were being attacked and he really by default expected Mutilus. And there's his factory now, so not too late. I mean, his factory's plenty of time. He's got three barracks, so it's a pretty strong play by Advocate in my opinion. He's not behind or anything like that. In fact, uh, Redeemer putting down a Spire now. I've got a feel that this Spire is, is just for Scourge because he's worried about dropship arrests. Um, Advocate did use a lot of dropships in the previous game. And oh my god, an attack coming out now. So um, Redeemer screaming out of his base and threatening to wipe out this entire attack force of, of uh, Advocate. The force is surrounded right now and everything's taken out except for the two, marine, uh, two medics and a couple of backup marines. And uh, yeah, uh, Redeemer being really aggressive right now. Advocate's really going to have to run away and actually put some bunkers down because this is going to be trouble otherwise. He's got a drone coming out ready to expand. Advocate has actually uh, been uh, prepared, though, and had three three marines up at the 12 o'clock just to make sure that uh, Redeemer doesn't expand there, because this is the point in the game where Zerg always gets the expansion when the when the lurkers are out and uh, carving up, doing a lot of damage. Uh, luckily, though, Advocate has got some bunkers there, and he's going to be uh, prepared for this, this final lurker push, and he needs to be, because... This is uh, where he can't really afford to be on the back foot too much and, and get overrun. In fact, he's got three bunkers, and that, that I, I think that three bunkers is good. It's it. Uh, some people might say it's unnecessary, but I think that uh, potentially you can save yourself a big headache if you've got three bunkers because uh, there's no telling how many lurkers he's going to have, and if they all pour in at once, then you, you're going to be glad you had the three there. So... Zodiac is a map in which there are four start locations with natural expansion each and four inner um, inner gas expansions and uh, Redeemer is taking control of one of them just underneath the 12 o'clock position, not at the actual 12 o'clock. But uh, I, I call these the innermost expansions because they are right next to your base but they are uh, separated from your base and they've got two ramps uh, and they're... If you think of the map as one big circle with the start locations around the outside, then the the inner expansion, uh, gas expansions take place on a small a smaller uh, circle uh, within that. Redeemer also going for a, uh, for another hatchery at the uh, ten o'clock position, maybe the ten thirty position. So he's he's going to be strong if he keeps his lurkers uh, containing the Terran player. Uh, so. Yeah, that's, that's going to be good if he can keep those two expansions up and running, get a lot of drones and gas going. He's going to be able to really support Hive Tech. So we'll see whether he does, in fact, go for Hive Tech. He didn't go Hive Tech uh, the first game, and I think that set him back. Yeah, there's the, there's the Queen's Nest now. So he, isn't he going to be morphing that that natural uh, expansion high, uh, layer up into a Hive shortly? Tanks uh, being produced now for advocates, which that's a good idea. He's definitely going to need them to break this contain, this lurker contain, and push out. And I feel like he's just saving up for a big timing push right now. He's, he's got to time this very correctly, though, because if he doesn't, if he puts it out too late, he's going to be uh, pushed back by defilers or who else knows what, maybe even guardians or something weird like that, possibly ultralisks. And if he uh, pushes out right now, in fact too soon, uh, he may not be able to overpower the Lurkers very easily, and I have a feeling that uh, Redeemer will be able to prevent it. What you're seeing here, though, is interesting. He's got lots of missile turrets, and he's got uh, Marines and tanks in his base at the back here, and this is because Advocate thinks that Redeemer is going to drop Lurkers into his base, and that wouldn't be a bad idea, but what, what Redeemer is, in fact, doing is upgrading to Hive and getting two um, hatcheries as expansions. <clears throat> 
uh, so he can't really afford to do drops. He just doesn't have the resources for it. And uh, luckily, he seems to have tricked Advocate into the thinking that drops with a plan. Second factory now for Advocate. This is what I love to see. Heaps of tanks supporting your Marines against Lurkers. It's a great way to just blast Lurkers into oblivion. It's really great if you can you can uh, use your tanks effectively like that. Uh, Advocate probably realizes by now that uh, Lurker drops are not, in fact, uh, Redeemer's plan, and hopefully he will...